This one's been neglected. It's in line. It wants to be built. It's a YS4500. It's a manual transmission right now. Single cylinder, but I'm thinking V-twin. I've already got some wheels picked out. So I'm in the middle of my red Craftsman build. I'm trying to find front tires. These two are eight inch. These two are eight inch. Those are 12 inch. That's the wheels that I want to use on the front. Then I look under here and I see these bear claws. I want to use those. Let's double check. Nope, those are nine inch. That's not going to work. I do have these 10 inch wheels from gopowersports.com. They would look good on the front. They'd be great in the sand, but they're supposed to be for the back of LT Johnson. LT Johnson right now has tractor tires. I might leave the tractor tires Put the golf cart wheels in these tires and that'd be my front tires. Look at that, with the John Deere finish, the shop's pretty much empty, except for dog prints. Let's get the next mower in here. So about a week ago, we decided this was gonna be a parts engine. I stole the coals, I stole the starter. Now I need to find a starter and two coals. It needs a crank seal and we've got a whole nother V-twin 22 horse for the Craftsman project. I'm gonna do something different with the exhaust. So the engine has been pulled. Now it's right here beside the tires for the back of that project. Anyway, underneath, if you look, it's already been pulley swapped. He went from about a three and a half to a four inch pulley. I'm thinking maybe a six inch. I already know where some coals and the starter's at. Gotta get this junk out of the way. I'm gonna pull anything that I might use, clutch, outer pulleys, belt, and the rest has gotta be scrapped. Okay, feel like I've stripped it down enough. Here's my stack of nuts, bolts, washers, brackets, a belt, a bungee cord, clutch parts, outer pulley, a ground wire. Let's get the junk out of here. Up, it's time to get started. I've got a lot of parts collected. There's a lot of red in this picture. I've got the red mower, there's a red gas can, a red sand blaster, a red S10, red wheels. Anyway, speaking of wheels, I've got the tires and wheels for the back. They're mounted, they're ready to go on, except for I'm gonna have to get some hubs. I gotta build a lift kit. And I don't wanna go extremely high like the John Deere. I'm thinking maybe an inch above the tires. In the front, uh, the good news is with that front end, it's easy to build a lift kit. It's not a big process like the John Deere was. Uh, I think for the front tires, I'm gonna use those gopowersports.com tires on these wheels. I need four hubs. I think my next step, I'm gonna reach out to gopowersports.com, get me four hubs. I have to build a custom lift kit, but I don't want it to be extreme like the John Deere. I just wanna clear these tires by about an inch. I've already got the material to make the drive shaft. We'll find a pulley, we'll find a pillar block bearing. We've already done it once, should be easier the second time around. And then we'll take this engine out, it's junk. It's gonna be recycled. Then we'll throw the other engine in, custom exhaust, gas pedal, we'll be done. So I just lifted the front end using the jack and about five inches of wood, and it's slightly higher than it needs to be but better to be a little bit too high than a little bit too low. Anyway, that should keep the tires from rubbing. And I know that's a directional tire, it's on the wrong side, but this wheel is shining the other one. Better for video purposes. Let's go lift the back and see how much of a lift we're gonna need back there. Maybe five will do back there too. So in the back, I use five by five blocks. Looks like that's gonna be enough to get the clearance on the top. But right there, right about here, is gonna be our closest spot. If I can get an inch clearance there, we'll be good. We may have to relocate the whole rear end back a little bit, and I'm okay with that. So now I'm thinking six inches in the back. We might do six inches in the front. If we do six in the front, that's gonna be the same as the John Deere had. So I just pulled the engine. That's what it looks like now. There's the engine. Then I sold the coal off that engine, set it on this engine. We need one more coal, one more starter. That one should be able to start. So update on the Red Craftsman. I just found this key switch in my file cabinet. I was hunting a pool ball and I found that key switch. That's good timing. That goes right there. The pool ball, this is the reddest one I could find. It's lucky number seven. It'll probably go here. I'm already missing the handle, so it might as well. And then shout out to Metal Supermarket. I got these two pieces of metal. One looks like a front bumper. And the other, I believe we'll cut it in half and that'll be my four inch lift kit for the back. So just double checking before we order. One, two, three, four by four inch. So four by four hubs with three quarter inch hole and it needs to have a keyway. And then right here beside the deliveries box, a gopowersports.com box. That is exciting. There is a hub. This is a four by four, three quarter inch center hub with keyway. And then the tires, these are Sun F22 seven by tens. I like that tread. Those are gonna look good on the front. KD8 LAH dash three quarter. Go bit through there to so open them up. The a bit. Part wheel. Here's the no. Hub. There we go. Fully in there. That's going to go right on the front. That'll go right on the back. We'll put the key in for the back. No key for the front. Twenty-six ten by twelve. Twenty-six twelve by ten inch wheels. Okay, here's the plan. 22 horse brick style V twin John Deere edition into this Red Craftsman YS 4500 with a six speed put the pool ball on the 26 
12 by 10 mud bugs. These are 22 7 by 10 gumbo blazers. Building a lift kit shouldn't be too hard this time. Uh, the plan is I've got this piece. This was scraps from Metal Supermarket. They gave it to me. Shout out to Metal Supermarkets. So I just used this tire machine to put these tires on the wheels. That was quick and easy. Then I went to the local tire shop. Let me include that footage. I have the first turf tire off. That's a good sign. Anyway, this one is on the hub, on the spindle. It's turned all the way to the left. It's not rubbing. I'm guessing when we go the other way, it's probably gonna rub. That's just a little turf tire and that's how close it is. So I've got the tire turned all the way to the right now. If we look at it, it's like it's climbing a rock on the right side. It is touching the frame. It's touching the steering. I think we can get by without a lift as long as we don't turn it super sharp. I'm okay with that. That'll make it drivable sooner. On this hub, when you push it on, it goes on about a half inch too far. I just cut this spacer. It's a 3 8 inch spacer now. There'll be a washer behind, a washer out here, a clip out here, grease inside, and this corner will be done. The first tire wheel is fully on. Be a good time for a before and after. That's a before. It's sitting up on a before before because it's flat. That is the after. So that's what it looks like, and I'm thinking I'm going to run without a lift kit. Four inches in the back, none in the front. We'll see what happens. And shout out to GoPowerSports.com. Those tires, I love those tires. One more good thing about these hubs, it spaces out your footprint. If you look at the distance between here and here, that's about four fingers. On this side, it's about one finger. Oh, that is cool. It'll match the back, because the back's wider too. Now it has front tires on it. They have been mounted, aired up, bolted on. Uh, the front hubs are on. I did get a shifter knob on. That's a number seven pool ball. I went with the maroon because it's in really good shape. That's red, but it's in bad shape. And plus nine means nothing. Q means nothing. At least seven is lucky. Uh, so up next, I'm gonna jump on the back. I gotta build a lift kit, get the tires and wheels on, put that drive shaft with the pulleys on it. And then we gotta find a belt, get the engine on. This baby is done. Not good, Red Crestman is now squatted. So the mower is lifted, the back tires are off. The goal is to drop the rear end, build the four inch lift kit. And I think I'm about to slide everything back a little bit so the tire clears right about here. So just pop the rear end out, it's easy. There's a shifter you gotta take off, one bolt. There's two brackets, two bolts, and there's four, two there and two there, bolts and nuts. Now I gotta get this pulley off. Looks like it's rusted on good. We'll start working on that. That's what the underbelly looks like. So I'm letting that pulley soak with some PV Blaster. And let's take a look at the lift kit. What I have, this is 10 inches worth of four by two box tubing. And I've just measured center of it is five inches since it's 10 inches long. I'm gonna make a square line all the way around it. Then we're gonna take the plasma cutter, cut it in half. This is what the mower's looking like with the lift kit sitting in place. Vice grips are holding on to the mower. There's no clearance issues with the fender. If we go underneath, the mower is sitting down on the lift kit. The lift kit's sitting down on the axle. The blocks are there just for looks. They're not doing anything. That's what it would look like. My next step, I gotta drill two holes here, two holes there, eight holes total. I'm gonna use these 5 16 bolts on the top with big washers, sandwich, probably top and bottom. And then down here, the stock bolts. I just painted the back of the mower black. That looks a lot better. The lift kits are half black. Once they dry on night, I'll flip them over, paint the other side. Once they dry then, we'll bolt together for good. Earlier, I painted the lift blocks. They're basically dry. These stainless steel brackets, that's gonna be my bumper brackets. I need 12 more bolts. I gotta drill 16 holes, but that's gonna be really nice. The pulley, it's still soaking. My next step, I gotta get that off before I can put the rear end in, before we can install the blocks, before we can get it rolling around in the garage. Then we gotta build a drive shaft. I just did the grinder. I've made up these little spacers. Let's try them on. I need my clips, see if the clips gonna fit. Looks like I made them slightly too long. 
may have to take a washer off the back. Looks like that's gonna be just right. Now I'm gonna take it apart and try to get that pulley off. So good news, bad news. The good news, the pulley came off. The bad news, the whole input shaft came out. So now you break the case and have put that clip back on while you're in there, you might as well do a Lincoln locker. Also, I put racing stripes on my lift blocks. So the lift kit is installed. I guess that's as far as I get tonight. I gotta buy some parts tomorrow. I am supposed to be working on the rear end. I need to fix the input shaft and I need to weld the spider gears. But right now I'm working on the engine. I just stalled a coil, this one and that one, off of a single cylinder, off of a single cylinder. Now they're on a V-twin. I just took the rear end, the transmission, and I loosened all the bolts. I had to go buy this T27 bit. I've loosened all the bolts. Now we're gonna take it apart. So I've loosened all the bolts. I've got my speed wrench. It's weird because I have a quarter inch impact. I have a half inch impact. I don't have a three eighths impact. And don't forget this one in the center. You'll be prying and prying and crying. Shifter shaft had to be pushed down and the top case came off. If we look inside, there's the input gear. I need to get that out. And technically all I have to do is put that on the input shaft in this hole, put it back together. But I want to clean it up. I want to weld here, weld here, weld there, weld there. And we'll have a posi for the first time in a long time. I mean, you're this far into it, you might as well. So the case is clean, the gears are all clean. I've got the axles back in. Our goal is to weld these spider gears so the axles don't turn independent of each other. The reason they do that is so you can go around a corner easy, but in the mud, the tire will lose traction spins. We want both tires to spin. The Lincoln locker is all done. I just need to clean up all this mess and we'll put it back together. So all this is back in. I've got the input shaft back on. I need to go get some gasket maker and put it back together. The bottom is all put together. The lid is clean. And here's my former gasket. This is leftover transmission fluid from my full-size tractor. It should work in a mower. So I put this transmission together over 24 hours ago. The glue should be dry. I've still got to get the piece, the 5 8 piece that goes here that we're going to weld onto the 5 8 inch shaft. i got to get the pillar block bearing. I went to a truck supply today, but they were out of both of those. I think I'll go ahead and put it under the mower, and then we'll build that drive shaft in place like we did on the John Deere. So the lift kit and the rear end, they're both fully in. All the bolts are tight. My next step, I'm going to put the hubs on, put the tires and wheels on, then we can roll it around. Then later, we've got to crawl in there, extend the shifter a little bit, and we've got to make that drive shaft with the pulleys. We're getting close in the rear. So one side is done, let's do this side. And this is probably, once we get it going, probably going to be the best mud machine just because it's got a locker and it's got aggressive wide tires on it. First time rolling on its own with the lift kit with four hubs. That is nice. So let's do that first push again. This side has more light on it. You can see it better. The good news is it pushes easy and all four tires and wheels are bolted on. So it's 5.30, I'm finally in the shop. I can work on the mower. I had to run a town today to run some errands. Anyway, I stopped by two different tractor supplies. The first one didn't have everything I needed, so I had to go to the second one. I Googled tractor supply near me and there's a new one I didn't even know about. Anyway, I've got one coming to my town. It'll be more convenient. Uh, this is the first tractor supply, pillar block bearing with the bearing. That's for the top of the drive shaft, that's 5 eighths. I've got this shaft left over from the John Deere. We'll clean the rust off, paint it, it'll be fine. This is the bottom of the drive shaft, goes down the transmission, we'll weld this onto that shaft. Uh, then at the second tractor supply, I had to get the one inch hub and the pulley. I'll try to put the prices on the screen because I don't remember exactly what the prices were. Anyway, our next step is to start building this drive shaft. 
and get the engine ready to beat it, put on, make sure the seven inch is gonna fit. Could've went with eight inch. I, don't, I didn't know how big, I could always change my mind. When you go to get the belt, we could just put it under there not welded. If we could get bigger, we can buy the bigger one, then buy the belt, we'll see. So on the rear hubs, I use these Allen screws, tighten them down so they don't move around. On the front, we don't need these. I actually took them out and I put an exert fitting. The bad news is it's the wrong size threads. I'm gonna look for the right size threads. If that don't work out, I'm gonna just tack weld it in there. Then we can grease our hubs with a grease gun. Update on my drive shaft, the rusty piece, I just cut five and a quarter inches off, polished it up with a wire wheel, that looks good. My next step, I need to go under the mower and cut a little bit off the input shaft. Then we'll go under and put this on, mark it and weld there. Then the bearing goes on. It's a little bit loose, but I'll take a punch and I'll make some marks on this to tighten it up on that shaft. Uh, I also color coded my sockets. There's my standard, there's my metric. Since half inch was missing, it missed out on paint. I made it yellow and red. The metrics are copper and blue and even have the numbers on the side of them. And of course, 10 millimeter has to be missing. Anyway, back on this, my next step, go underneath there and cut off some input shaft and then probably not will weld there and have most of this done. Then I gotta cut a piece of bed frame to mount the pillar block bearing. So I just took a break from the back, from the drive shaft, I'll come up to the front. I drew the line approximately here would be as far as the pulley can go. This is a seven inch, eight would be a half inch closer. I believe we could do an eight if we want to as far as this side goes, but the belt, however it runs through here, it might try to rub there, it might try to rub here. I don't know if there's room for idler pulleys, so we may be stuck with a four, four and a half. I don't know yet. In the back. Okay, so this is a stock pulley, big, slow for cutting grass. And we put the drive shaft in like that. And we've got an option six inch or five inch. I'm thinking now five inch because we may have to put a smaller one on the front than the seven. If we drop that on like that, when we run the belt on there, when you push the clutch in, the belt gets loose. It's not gonna fall off. This is gonna keep it in place. We could space it up. Let's see, get that lined up, space it up about right there. That's about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch. Weld it onto the shaft, we'll be good to go. Uh, so my next step, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the bed frame. So I just cut the frame to frame brace out of a bed frame. There's my pillar block. There's my 5 eighths adapter for the transmission. I'm gonna stop for a night, go get me some food. We'll continue tomorrow. Bingo. Something about these hubs and these lugs makes the machine feel more legit. So it spins really good. Once you go in the mud a couple times to get some mud in that hole, that would be bad. When we get the Zerk fitting in there, that keeps the mud out and we can pump new grease in. It's a nine millimeter to put it in. And somebody commented to put these in there. I forget who it was. If that was you, I really appreciate that comment. Done. Let's try it out. Take two. You can see it squeezing out over here. Can you see that part? It's full of grease. Now to the other side, once we get it done, I gotta get back on that drive shaft. So these are 10 inch wheels. I know where there's two more just like this, I should get them. I've got some 10 inch pal tires. That'd be good, you go to the river, swap out your pal tires play in the sand, swap back on your mud bugs. I mean, the mud bugs will be fine in the sand. Just be fun to use the pedal tires again. So there's an old mower bracket that limits the turn to the left. I'm gonna take that bracket off. We should be able to turn better. And then save the bolt in case we need it for something else. Still rubs if you go all the way, but we'll get more turn out of it. 
So we were working last night, started on the drive shaft. I made the brace that goes across. We cut out the actual shaft. My next step, I need to go down and cut off a little bit of this input shaft. Then we can start building the drive shaft, get that bracket in, get the pulleys on, get the rear done. Here's a before shot of the input shaft. We do not need that E-clip. I'm gonna cut it off right about where that E-clip line is. Keep the key in and we can put our adapter on. So I'm in the middle of cutting through the input shaft. I put that paper towel around there. It's wet. It's trying to keep this shaft from getting too hot and melting that seal. Anyway, halfway through, here's the rest of it. The top is hot, the bottom, I feel no heat. Still should be fine. So for our next step, I've got this adapter. It's 5 8 inch. It has set screws. We'll be tightening those down. It has a keyway. The short Draft shaft will go in there. It'll be welded here. We gotta figure out where our pulleys go. They'll be welded there. Getting close. I just took the bench grinder and I took the paint off this. It should weld pretty. And I made a mark where we wanna weld it at. It'll go just about like that. We'll weld it on. And pulley update, this is the pulley that came off the mower. I had to use a grinder to convince it to come off, but that does not hurt it. And we're going to be welding onto the shaft anyway. If we use this one versus that one, when we put the 5-inch pulley on that spacer, it lines up pretty much perfect. So this went under the mower, put everything in place, made a mark on the drive shaft, and I tightened on these two 5 16 bolts. So I'm going to weld around this. I'll probably just cut these bolts off, leave them in there. This is going to be permanent. On the other side... The big pulley belt keeper, I'm gonna weld all the way around that. We should be good to go. I just welded together the pulleys and draft shaft system, waiting for that to cool down. I went and pulled out a pedal tire. It is the same height as the front tire, 22, 22. The back is a 26, so it might look like it's squatting a little bit if we put that on there, but it might be fun. I feel like those would do great in sand, but those might do be fun to just test them. Anyway. Uh, I'm working on the brackets for the transmission. I've got two of these. One's bolted on underneath there. I need a six inch piece to extend it. This is, if I cut in half, two six and a quarter pieces. I'm going to cut that in half. What are these? Then that part will be done. And then we get to jump on the shifter. That'll be fun. Bracket number one is in place. It looks great. I'm going to take it off and go weld it up. Bracket number two still has to be tuned up. This is the bracket for the other side. All we have to do is weld it together and then paint it and then put it on. It is break time while the paint dries. I'm gonna go find some food. When I get back, this will get it installed. That holds our pillar block bearing. We'll get all the drive shaft and pulley installed, get them two brackets on, and the whole back will be finished except for the shifter and we can jump on the engine. Here on the parts mower, there is a front bumper. It shouldn't be there for long. Let's try on that front bumper, but first, let me show you the back tires. If we try on the pallet tires, they're about half as tall as the mud bugs. We still might do it. I'm going to paint it before I put it on. I just want to see if the hole's on it, and it should. We've got three options here and a slot. Should work out good. So the bumper is a universal mount. I've got it sitting, it looks kind of low, but when you open the hood, it has to be that low. The hood still hits it, but the hood opens far enough. The only catch is when you turn sharp, the tire's gonna wanna rub on that bumper. So what you'd have to do, what we'll have to do is cut it off here, just have a straight pipe bumper. Get rid of that angle. And I'm okay with that, as long as it works. I just cut off angle number one. That might be an exhaust dump someday. So both transmission brackets are installed. I did not get to the drive shaft, the pulleys, the bearing. I've got the bracket painted, it's drying. The bumper's cut off, it's drying. The pulleys, they've been painted, they're drying. I gotta knock off now because I got early rise time for work in the morning. And then maybe tomorrow after work, we'll get the uh, drive shaft finished. So it is a gorgeous day today, no rain. Anyway, the goal is to have this mower running by the end of the day. It's a long list, but it is possible. Uh, drive shaft, 
pulleys, pillar block bearing, brace. The engine, I tried to find a seal for the engine before I put it in. I couldn't find a seal, so we're gonna put it in, just keep adding oil to it. Uh, we gotta get a pulley on the front. I don't know if it's gonna be the big seven inch pulley. I also bought a four and a half inch pulley. We can take the one we don't use back. That will probably work. The other one maybe will work. Also got a sticker. And they had this knife on clearance. I should've got you guys one. It was $54.99, marked down to $13.99. Pretty cool looking knife. So the two starters, this one's missing a part. I went with the best looking one, but I line up these teeth to those teeth. It needs to have 16 teeth, it only has 14. So I'm gonna take that back off. We may have to either put a pull start on it or borrow one off of a different mower. Just back from the store, I've got this new fuel filter. I had this new line in stock already. We'll get that put on. And I did find a starter, started taking it off and there's a wasp nest. So then they calm down and I'm gonna go back out there. We'll get that starter. So I just put some gas in the tank. I don't see any leaks. It comes around to the valve. The valve's still turned off. This is not really on. I'm gonna take this back off while I'm putting the starter on. Speaking of starters, I found this starter on a parts mower. I'm gonna clean it up and put it on. I just cleaned the starter. It's an original Briggs and Stratton starter. It looks really good. This is a Briggs style engine. I'm gonna bolt it on there. I might go ahead and pull the back off, put a little grease in there, then bolt it back together, you know, while we've got it off. So on the to-do list, I gotta put some oil in it. I gotta put either a throttle or a gas pedal put the air filter on, fix the shifter, that's probably the biggest thing, hook up the gas lines, and I'm sure there's something else. Oh, by the way, I just got the brace with the pillar block bearing on. If we roll the mower, you can see the bearing spinning on the shaft. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Oh, I need one more thing, a uh, belt keeper in the front. I'm already working on that. Sure enough, I forgot to mention, put a battery in it. Add longer cable to the list. This one is about three inches too short. Correction, it's about a half inch too short. You can check air filter off the list. So the short one, we're getting rid of it, and I found one that was longer. It's faded, but it's long enough. It's hooked up on this end. It was off of batteries. I'm gonna leave that on there. It's hooked to the starter. Let's move to the next thing. I just rebent this original belt keeper. I'm gonna go under and see how it fits. So the front belt keeper, is a little space there, a little space there. That should be great. These have the stock keepers. And in the back, if the belt goes to fall off, the big pulley catches it. When you let the clutch back off, it goes back onto the small pulley. So on the shifter, what I'm thinking, if I can make this one 50% longer, make this one 50% longer, this rod will probably be fine like it is. Then the shifter upstairs should still be calibrated. First gear should still be first, and six should still be sixth. Reverse should still be reverse. That's my theory, we're about to try it. Custom shifter bracket time. This is three inches. I need to be four and a half. That's an old deck bracket. I cut it off. I'm going to weld here, drill a hole at four and a half inches. On the other end, I'm going to drill two holes and bolt it to the original, and it'll be seven and three quarters long. So up next, I'm going to drill a hole at four and a half inches. We'll paint it black, and then this half is done. So our bracket is basically ready. I just notched here, notched there. It sits on top of the frame. There's a hole there. I gotta drill one hole here. I just drilled these two holes for the bearing. Uh, on the frame, I'll probably use the plasma cutter. It's gonna be hard to get down into the battery box with the drill. So we'll just pop a couple holes with the plasma cutter. And then actually on the shaft, I've got the bearing on, but the bearing is spinning on the shaft. That's not how it's supposed to go. So I've got this punch. I'll take this punch and I'll make some divots, some freckles, and that'll tighten up the bearing on the shaft and it can spin where it's supposed to pin like this. So if you look at the shaft now, there's little craters all over it. If we put the shaft on, the shaft is now tight. I'm gonna tap it into place and we will be done with it. The bearing is now on right where it's supposed to be and it spins like it's supposed to. It's time to put stuff into place. So I gotta cut one little hole down the frame for this bracket to bolt to. So if we look inside, there is a bolt there. There is a bolt there. The bearings in place, all its bolts are tight. There are two Allen bolts downstairs. I gotta tighten those up. I'm not gonna bolt this down yet because I still have to get a belt on. Once we get the belt on, we'll put two nuts there. The back is done. So I've got the whole drive system back out again. I forgot one thing. These bolts that I tightened down the pulley on the shaft with before we welded, they hit my bracket. So I'm gonna cut those off and then we'll stick it back in. 
then we'll tighten these Allen bolts. So the bad news is this seal is leaking. The good news is it's a slow leak. More good news, the pulley I just bought, there's one already like it on there. So we can take this one back, trade it in for a belt. I might get out of the knife too. Anyway, my next step, I'm gonna get this off. Then we'll get the engine sitting in place. I have the engine sitting in place. I've got it sitting upright so I can take the exhaust off. There's the exhaust. I kind of like it, kind of hate it. That would probably sound good, but it's gonna keep the hood from going on. And I do not like that kink right there. So the engine is bolted in. I've got the seven inch pulley. I don't know if it'll work. I'm gonna get in and try it. If it works, great. If it don't, I'm gonna take it back. This one's gonna go back because I don't need two that are identical. Uh, if we use this one, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole. That way the oil leak, it can go ahead and drip out instead of going over and getting on the belt. We don't need belt slippage. So I've got the seven inch pulley sitting in place. It rubs on the, was it left side? Right side would be fine. It's not rubbing, it's right on the outer pulley just like it's supposed to be. So that side would work. So the plan is to take back this hub, this pulley, that pulley. I don't need two that are alike. Drill a hole in this one, I gotta buy a key. This one, when I took it off, didn't even have a key in it. So we're gonna use the four and a half inch, take this back. And don't worry, I got plenty of bags, tractor supply, tractor supply. Uh, this build brought to you by tractor supply. So I have one for what I'm keeping and one for what I'm taking back. And they use my phone number, so I shouldn't need a receipt, although I probably still have the receipts. So I just drilled two oil relief holes and it's ready to go on as soon as we get the key for it. Just came back from Tractor Supply. This is the belt I took for comparison purposes. The one I bought, I think is gonna be too short, but it's the closest one they had. If it's too short, we'll take it back. I picked up these keys for the pulley. This is the pulley. Ooh, check this out. I put all these they had. Now we have two of them. And anything else? I guess that's it. Belt, keys, and knife. Three things. Oh, and I took back three things. Made $34 on this deal. So I just cleaned out the gas tank from the yellow Poland, and it looks like it's going to fit right in. I need two bolts, just like it was made for it. So I'm at a bit of a holdup while I look for a starter, and I can buy a fuel filter first thing in the morning. Anyway, to kill time, I'm on the back. I just put reflectors here, reflectors on the side. That's from a viewer. This, I just cut out of this, if you want one, uh, send me a letter, hit me up on Patreon, then send me a message. This is our slow moving vehicle triangle, slow moving vehicle triangle. And this one's not terribly pulley swap, so it won't be extremely fast. Four inch in the front, five inch in the back. Be a lot better than stock, but not as fast as fast mowers or General Lee. So good news, the key is the right size, it's in place. The belt is on, let me get the pulley, see how close it is. So I just barely put the pulley on, the belt goes around it, I didn't know it would do that. It's on every idler pulley, it's on in the back. If we hit the clutch, it gets a little bit loose, that might would release. I think I'll go ahead and put the pulley on, put the key in, tighten it down, and if this belt turns out to be too short, this is a 96, we'll go back for a 97. So good news, I got the shifter hooked up last night. The bad news is that's reverse. That'd be neutral first, maybe second. I gotta get in there, there's an adjustment. Under the rear fender, there's a shifter adjustment here. We're gonna see if that's gonna be enough to fix it. And I need to get rid of some of this dangling deck stuff. There goes the dangling deck stuff. So close. That's neutral. Let's tighten it up. So I've got the rear end jacked up. When we spin the tires, they spin together. Gotta love that posse. That's gonna be so good in the mud, so good in the sand. Anyway, neutral. That's reverse right where it's supposed to be. Neutral's right where it's supposed to be. First. Right there's first. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth and sixth. We've got all the gears. The shifter's off just by a little bit. And when I say off by a little bit, it's on about five and a quarter, five and a half. Six would be right about here, stock. That's six now. But neutral's right where it's supposed to be. And reverse is right where it's supposed to be. I think I can live with that. I just painted my shifter linkage. I'm waiting for that to dry. Then I drug out a whole bunch of pressure washer cart pipe. That's for building exhaust. Uh, 
Meanwhile, I stuck on this exhaust. That's the exhaust that came on this engine. I'm curious to see what it sounds like, but I can't run it because I won't have a hood. If we didn't have a hood, this would be very tempting, especially because I could probably make this flapper work on there. I don't like the exhaust because of the hood interference and that kink. But I still want to see what it sounds like, and we're on the edge of starting it up, so we might as well have some kind of exhaust on it. So I just turned the gas on. I've got a battery in it. I don't know if the key's going to work. I don't know if the key will turn it off. I just want to bump and see what it does. I thought I was ready to start, but then I realized there's no throttle on there. It might try to go wide open. I'm scared. Let's see if I can reach the throttle. That's the choke. find a snack while the smoke clears so just remember to add some oil to it it still needs a little more anyway I'm working on the throttle I found this little short throttle which is way too short to go to the dash but if we bend it around like this that could become a foot pedal I need to break out all this plastic it's still hooked to the governor but that'd be better than nothing uh, if I break out all that plastic we mount it here get a spring we'll have a gas pedal Gas pedal update. I uh, don't have the spring on yet, but I'm dying to try it out. being too loud no spring and the governor still hooked up it works now the question is where do i find a spring people are flipping for it I'm back out to work on the mower. It should be done by now, but I just did a seven day work week. It was over 80 hours. I think it was 82 hours. Anyway, that kept me away from the mower. I did get to go to the flea market. I found some John Deere tags. I went to Trash Supply and I bought some more supplies. Uh, those John Deere tags could go on this one because it is a John Deere engine, but I want to put one on what I'm driving. I want to put one on this John Deere that I just finished. I think maybe on the back of it. And I forgot to mention, I got some oil and I poured it in there and it is right on the mark. So we're good on that. Check that off the list. I use this Rotella tractor oil. And I believe that's all I have. Probably that spring's in there somewhere or somewhere in this toolbox. I need to hypnotize myself and see where I put it. In these updates, I keep forgetting something. I'm back on. I went to the post office. I picked up a letter from Jeff Waltz. He had already sent one. He sent another letter. Shout out to Jeff Waltz. And on the back, I need all the shout outs I can get. Shout out again to Jeff Waltz. Anyway, Hope this gets to you soon. It did. On the inside, he's got a two-page letter written in cursive, which is impressive. And he also sent some. He knows I like reflectors. There's another red one in there hiding. And these can go on the front of this mower. Also, you're not supposed to do this, but he also sent, there's the other red. 
He also sent, give me five. There it is. He sent a $5 bill. They say not supposed to send cash in the mail, but he did, it made it, I appreciate that. So I'm gathering parts for an exhaust build. I believe this one came off the Amazon. She bought it, we used it once, then there was water in the oil. I changed the oil, then there's water in the oil, so that was a color fail. I'm looking at the pipe, that looks good. This one came from a yard sale, it's got a Honda engine. It's froze up, but I might can get it going. I need that engine for my go-kart. Plus, look at all these 90, 90, 45, 90, whole bunch of angles. And I've got those little scraps left over from other builds. I gotta stop stalling and start starting. Plus, if we build any more wheelie bars, I need these wheels, I need these tires. So on this exhaust build, the hardest part is just getting started. I don't really have a vision. Uh, I wanna change this. I don't like the way it sounds, plus it interferes with the hood. So we gotta get rid of it. I think the first step, I'm just gonna cut it here, cut it there, start adapting to the pressure washer. Maybe some 90s going through this hole, point them backwards. That might be all we do for now. I don't know yet. So I was working on the exhaust. I got two 90s from the pressure washer carts pointing straight down. That'll probably sound good. I was making good progress and I had to run to town. That set me back a little bit. Anyway, while I was in town, I picked up another spring. We'll get that on in a few minutes. Anyway, I think I'm gonna do a cold start. It's not been started over a week. See what it sounds like with the 90s just pointing down. And I would leave it like that, but I usually ride on the dirt road or in the sand. It's gonna be making a bunch of dust. So I'm gonna try to do some 90s pointing backwards. But I wanna see what it sounds like. So hopefully it always starts that good. Uh, did you see the dust blow up when I started it? So we gotta do some kind of 90s. I think I'll just do a 90 point them back, be done with it. And that noise you hear in the background, the boy's making a zombie weapon. So the exhaust is almost done. I've got this side just like I like it. At 90s here, it's tacked there. It goes underneath, it sticks out just like that. That should sound great. On the other side, it's swinging under, but I gotta make a cut right about here, bring it up a little bit, tack it together. Maybe we'll do a sound test on it, then fully weld it, bolt it on, and it's done. But before I continue, I'm gonna go cook a steak dinner. And here's how the steak turned out. I need a bigger plate. I just ate so much steak, I'm almost too full to work. What I wanna do next, I wanna cut off that exhaust to the right length, tack it together. Maybe I can get the whole thing welded together tonight. Maybe we can get the spring on the throttle. While I was hunting that spring, I found these tags. I forgot I had these. I've already cleaned this one up. It's so old, it's got orange writing. And you got all these cleaned up and put on the wall. If you don't send me a tag, here's an address. Both pipes have been welded together. They're in front of the fan cooling off. I guess in the morning we'll paint them and put them on. So while the exhaust was cooling, I put on this spring, a self-tapping screw, drill a hole there. When you push down, it comes up all the way down. That sound is the choke coming on. Anyway, if you want to idle low, you'll take your foot and push it back up. And eventually we want to hook it straight to the carburetor. And the exhaust, it's cool now. What's also cool, I've got the exhaust gasket still. So the exhaust has been painted, it is now drying. In the morning, we're gonna see what it sounds like. It is the next day, the exhaust should be dry. I just cut this Allen wrench to fit into a socket so I can use a ratchet. Let's get the exhaust put on so we can see what it's gonna sound like. Here's that exhaust ready to go on. And I'm gonna leave those holes. That might help when you wanna do backfires. So I just put the exhaust on. I've got my hearing protection on. Let's do a cold start.
So the plan on the throttle, there is a arm back here on the governor. I'm gonna cut it off about where the elbow is. Weld it here when this rotates, it'll open and close the carburetor. So I just took my governor arm off. I cut off the end of it. This is the part we need. I'm gonna weld it right about there. Before I do that, I gotta turn this 45 into about a 90 and it'll be right about in the stock spot. If we'd have left this in the stock spot, if you push the gas, it goes to idle. On the opposite side, when you push the gas, it opens up the throttle. So a slight change of plans. I made this a 90 and it was not working right. So now I've made it straight. And then this linkage, I put in a vise and I gave it a 90 degree turn. So now if we put this onto the carburetor like that, then this goes like this, then that welds on like that and problem solved. One more slight modification to this arm. I put an offset in it. If we had to weld it way out here, when you barely touch the gas, it's gonna be wide open. If you put it towards the center, you'll get more gas pedal movement with less carburetor movement. So the plan is weld it somewhere about right there. So I just did the welder, did three little tacks and I squirted the water to cool it off. And when you hit the gas, it's not a whole lot of movement in the pedal, but that'd be idle, that'd be wide open. It's working. See if I can represent it here for you. Idle, wide open. I gotta get this mounted back on, get the spring back on it, and we are done. I might put another tack weld on there, right about here. That should be plenty good enough. There are some little plastic grommets. I didn't want those melted, so I squirted it with some water. I think I'll go ahead and mount the gas pedal, then we can test it, put the hood on, call it done. It is time to fire it up and show you the throttle, how much it moves from wide open to idle. And remember, there's no choke now, so it might not start as easy. Just my luck, we're out of gas. Hang on, I'll put more in it. So I just put more gas in it. The only catch is now you gotta reach under the hood to hit the choke. <laughs> I gotta use my foot to do the gas. So I have the hood on the mower, it's basically done. I need to find the headlights, put those in, plug them in. That's like a five second job since I find them if you want to start it. <laughs> oh, I wish they'd all start it easy, run that good. The only thing left to do to it would be the headlights then. Oh, one thing I would change, the seats unglued. It's nice, it's comfortable, but it's unglued. That's the one thing that I would like to change about the whole mower.
I just cut up one of the reflectors Jeff Walls sent. Shout out to Jeff Walls. Anyway, I'm gonna put one here, one there, one on each side. Shout out to Jeff. The reflectors have been installed on the front. That'll make it safer, especially till I find the headlights. So I made it all the way to the beach and it wants to be windy and rainy. Hopefully it'll stop before dark. I wanna do a test run in the sand. So the sea breeze is still kicking, but the rain has stopped and good news, I got a better, brighter looking key ring.